Hello! You know, it only seems like yesterday I was talking about the new GX12 radio for Radio Master, and that didn't come too long after the NAMAC module. Today I want to talk about the new XR series of receivers from Radio Master, which kind of go with these because of the GMX stuff. I've previously shown you the DBR4 receiver, which is specifically designed to work with GMX band. But what I'm going to show you today are more of what you might call general purpose receivers. But they do all use the new LR1121 chip, which has that wide range of operating frequencies. This family of XR receivers so far are numbering one to four, but the XR3 is still pending release, so I don't have that one to show you right now. But what we do have is the XR1, that can work on 2.4868-915. The XR2, which is a, a little nano receiver designed for things like whoops and is 2.4 gigahertz only. The XR3, as I mentioned, we don't have yet, but from what I've read about it on the specifications, it sounds like it's very similar to the XR1, but with antenna diversity. And then we have the XR4, which is a Gemini crossband receiver. So this has dual transceivers with dual band antennas. That said, you could equally run this on just 2.4 gigahertz or 868-915 as you wanted to. I've mentioned dual band antennas and what we have in here is something a little bit new and different. So let's get a close up and we'll take a look at each of these in a bit more depth. Okay, so here is the XR1, which I think is gonna be your sort of general purpose quad RX. You will notice the packet's labeled with a dash DB. So this particular one comes with a dual band antenna. When these go on sale, you'll be able to specify the type of antenna you want, 2.4, 868-915, or dual band. The antennas will be sold separately as well, so you can always swap later if you change your mind. So in all the cases, you get the standard sort of things in the bags that you would expect. We've got three pieces of heat shrink, um, some cable to solder, and the receiver itself. So from the point of view of familiarity, it looks just like any other ELRS receiver. It's just got a different chip on it. What does look different here is the way the dual band antenna works. What you've basically got is a 2.4 receiver piggybacking an 868 or 915 receiver. I have to say this looks a lot neater than the DBR4 with its four independent antennas, but that probably maybe works better than having the, the two antennas in one. I don't know. It'd be interesting test to have though, wouldn't it? So for illustration purposes, if you didn't want to get it with that dual band antenna, you could buy it with the 868 or 915, or this is what the 2.4 antenna looks like, which you'll probably be quite familiar with. Now, when we're talking about the LR1121 transceivers, I feel that showing this chart is very useful. It basically tells you what modes will work based on what RX or TX you have. Because I, I feel people will wonder if they've got the original SX128X chip, which is basically everything ELRS up until this point, what will be the compatibility between that and these new ones? So as you can see from the chart with all these types of receiver, if you have an original ELRS module or radio, you'll still be able to run in these speeds for 2.4 gigahertz or these speeds for 868 or 915. Basically, we lose the FLRC modes, which could be an issue for those of you who actually can feel the difference between 500 hertz and 1000 hertz on a stick. Whereas me being quite old, I can't tell the difference between 150 hertz and 1000 hertz. But what you lose in the raw speed of 1000 hertz, you gain in the new FSX modes. These have built-in packet repair and DK500 is similar in the FLRC D500 mode, as it sends repeat packets to reduce any chance of loss. So this is the sort of mode you want to use if you're in a challenging RF environment. But the ultimate reliability is to use X100 or X150, which is obviously slower, but it's working over two different bands simultaneously. So let's move on now to the XR2. And maybe you're thinking, hey, what's the point of using an LR1121 chip if it's 2.4 gigahertz only? And you can see the reason why it's 2.4 gigahertz only. It uses the tiny little tower antenna. As I said before, this is really designed to go in quads where space is at a premium and every gram matters. Essentially, your little toothpicks or whoops. But again, it means you can fly it in DK500 mode, giving you that error correction and multiple packets being sent every time, keeping your link as solid as it can be. As I mentioned, the XR3 isn't available yet, but try and imagine it, I think, from the description as looking like an XR1, but with two antennas for antenna diversity. Talking of diversity, this is the XR4. This has true diversity, and that means it's got two LR1121 transceivers. It's got two dual band antennas. So you can make use of 2.4 gigahertz, 868-915 gigahertz in diversity, or 
Gemini crossband diversity where we're flying uh, packets in two different frequencies and two different bands at once. That should make for an amazing link. It's a little bit chunkier, but um, if you're doing sort of either long range stuff or stuff again, you've got a very difficult RF environment, then it shouldn't be too much hassle to put that in a reasonable quad. It kind of feels like uh, if that was in the back of the quad, then this these would go on one of each of the legs. I mean, it would make more sense if you could change the orientation of one, but that may not be possible. It's still a lot more easier than fitting something like the DBR4 on though. So I don't have flight tests of these RXs yet, which is a combination of the weather not playing ball and the proximity to the Christmas holidays, which is making me very busy. But I'm looking forward to trying some of these out. So I'm gonna reconfigure a few quads to use these and take them out for a proper fly. In the meantime, thanks very much to Radio Master for supplying these receivers for me to look at. And if you're interested in finding out more about them, then of course there's a link down to all these below in the description. I hope that was helpful and I'll catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.